Starting with Adobe Illustrator might feel a bit overwhelming at first because there are lots of things to learn, tools, panels, and options, but don't worry. In this beginner's tutorial, I won't go over everything, just the really important tools that makes crafting logos easier and better. If you're new to Illustrator or used to Photoshop, these tools will help you get started quickly. Let's dive in. Unlike Photoshop, which creates raster images made of pixels, Illustrator works with vectors. Vectors are scalable without any loss of quality. This means your logos will stay sharp and clear, no matter the size, perfect for everything from business cards to billboards. If you want to practice with me, the logo design exercise file is linked in the description. When you open Adobe Illustrator, you will see this welcome screen. Click on New File, and this menu will pop up. From here, you can customize your new document settings, like the dimensions of the document, the measurement unit, the orientation, and the color mode. Use CMYK for print and RGB for digital graphics. Now press Create. This is our document, and you can choose any workspace preset from here. On the top, we have the header containing all the menus. Below, you will find the control bar. It is very helpful, providing control over any selected tool or object. On the left side, you will find the toolbar, which contains all Adobe Illustrator tools. On the right side is the place for the panels. If you don't see any, you can add any panel you want from the window menu. Now I will walk you through the most important tools and panels that will help you create logos in Adobe Illustrator. Click here and hold to see all the shapes menu. For now, we will select the rectangle tool, click and drag to freely create a rectangle, and hold shift to make a perfect square. You can either do this or just click on the canvas, and this window will pop up. You can choose custom dimensions and press OK. To make circles, select the ellipse tool, same controls as all shapes. Click and drag to create it, and hold shift to make a perfect circle. As you can see, all shapes are made of anchor points. Two connected anchors make a path in between. More anchor points make a closed shape. If the path is rounded, we will have handles to control the curve. We will get to this topic later on. Moving to the selection tools, we have two main tools. The black cursor is the selection tool, and the white one is the direct selection tool. Select the black cursor or press V as a shortcut. You can click on the shape and drag to move it. Or you can click on the corner and drag to scale it. If you get close to the corner, this rotation icon will appear. Hold click and drag to rotate it. When you drag those live widgets, you can make the corners rounded. When you select an object, you can modify it from this control bar above. You can change the stroke size, disable the stroke color, or change the fill color. Moving to the direct selection tool, you can press A as a shortcut. You can select a single anchor point or multiple anchors. When you click on an anchor point and drag, you can move it independently from the other points to modify the form of the shape. You can select an anchor point and drag the widget to make a single corner round it. On circles, you can use the direct selection tool to move any anchor point, and when an anchor point of a curved path is selected, the handles will appear. You can use the direct selection tool to drag and rotate the handles to modify the curve. To create more complex shapes, we will use the pen tool, shortcut, B. Your first click will create an anchor point, the second anchor point will create a straight segment in between. As you continue adding points, you create new segments, and when you hold click and drag, you will create curved lines. When you click back on the first anchor point, the shape will be closed. To understand more about the pen tool, we will illustrate this heart shape. Click here to create your first anchor point, then another click here to create a straight segment. If you release, you will not get a curved path, so Ctrl Z to undo, then click and drag to get the desired curve. You can see that the curve starts out from the anchor point and follows the handle. Do the same here by clicking and dragging. Then hold Alt and rotate the handle to get the perfect curve. Then click and drag here and then close the shape by clicking on the first anchor point. 
Now, with the Direct Selection tool, you can correct the curves by selecting the anchor points and stretching the handles. One of the most useful tools in Adobe Illustrator to create logos is the Pathfinder. You can add it from the window menu. Let's create a circle, then hold Alt and drag to duplicate it. Then overlap it with the first one and select both of them. Then from the Pathfinder, you can merge them by clicking Unite, or you can subtract by clicking Minus Front, or click Intersect to keep the intersection of the two shapes. If you click on Divide, then right-click and ungroup, and you will create a separate shape for each section of the intersection of the two circles. You can delve more into this powerful tool by watching the Pathfinder tutorial on my channel. The advanced version of the Pathfinder is the Shape Builder tool. For me, this is the tool I use the most to create logos. I will add a circle here, then select everything, then go to the Shape Builder or Shift M as a shortcut. Then hold Alt and click on a section to delete it, or click and drag on multiple sections to merge them together. Or just click on a section to separate it. Now to wrap up, we will use the previous knowledge to illustrate this OWL logo. To make the head, start by creating a circle here. Make it aligned with the logo. Then with the pen tool, click here and drag to start a curve. Then again click and drag and adjust the curve to fit the logo. Hold Alt and rotate the handle to the direction of the next curve, then click here and drag up, then click again on this anchor point to start a new path, then close the shape. To see the logo in the background, select the created shapes, and from the control bar, decrease the opacity, and change the fill color to orange. Then from the Pathfinder, press Unite to merge the two shapes. With the Direct Selection tool, click on this anchor point and drag the handle to adjust the curve to fit the logo. With the Pen tool, click here and drag, then click here and drag and hold Alt to rotate the handle, then close the shape. To make the eyebrows, create a circle, then swap the fill and stroke, then increase the stroke size. Now with the Direct Selection tool, select this anchor point, press Backspace to delete it, then delete this anchor point, drag the left path here, then hold Alt and drag it here, then go to Object, Transform, and click on Reflect, then press OK. Align it with the other one, then drag them together here. To make the feet, create a vertical rectangle here, hold Alt and drag it here, then select the two shapes holding Shift, then with the Shear tool, click and drag to slant it, then align it with the logo. Select the two paths of the eyebrows, then go to Objects and click on Expand to transform them into shapes. You can learn more about this by watching the Expand tutorial. Now select the legs along with the body shape, and you can merge them together by clicking Unite in the Pathfinder, or you can do it using the Shape Builder by dragging on the desired shapes. To make the face of the owl, I create a circle here, then align it with the logo, then scale it a little bit up, then hold Shift and click on the body shape, then from the Pathfinder, click on Minus Front to subtract it. Finally, you can unite everything. And that's it. If you're interested in replicating this logo, you can easily access the file through the link in the description below. Thanks a bunch for tuning in. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for more content, and I'll catch you in the next video.